Hello students and welcome to the session of atomic structure. Yesterday we were discussing the model of atom given by Rutherford. Rutherford gave the name of his model based on the planetary motion of planets around the sun. He said that electron will revolve around nucleus but his model could not stand the onslaught of electromagnetic theory developed by Maxwell. Maxwell said that if a charged body like electron will revolve or accelerate, it will continuously lose its energy in the form of electromagnetic radiations. And in the process, while losing the kinetic energy, it will spiral down into the nucleus. And according to Maxwell theory, the existence of atom will come into danger. Though Rutherford was not able to explain completely the structure of atom, but nevertheless, his model was a milestone in the progress of development of theory of atomic structure. Here are few findings by Rutherford while investigating the structure of atom. Rutherford, while doing the research into the atomic structure, came across these findings. He said that radius of atom and radius of nucleus, if we take a ratio of that, that ratio will be almost 1 lakh. That means if you take this board size as the size of nucleus, then almost entire South India will be the size of the atom. Staggering. You can see that how much small the nucleus is as compared to the atomic structure, I mean the structure of atom or the size of the atom. He also came to conclusion that volume of atom upon volume of nucleus, this ratio is 10 to power of 15. Yes, we know that all these are spherical in size. So the volume of an atom or nucleus which are spherical in nature must be proportional to R cube. Radius is 10 to power of 5. This will be R cube, 10 to power of 5 cube. That is 10 to power of 15. He also came to conclusion the density of nucleus is staggering 10 to power of 14 gram per cc. It is humongous. See, I'll tell you a story. When I was in 10th class, my teacher, my chemistry teacher, she asked me to hold on and, and lift a bottle. That bottle was filled with mercury. I thought that that bottle must be having some chemical like nitric acid, sulfuric acid or water. So I was expecting that I will be able to lift that up easily. But to my surprise, I found that I even could, lifting was a different task, I couldn't even move it. And the reason being, the density of mercury is 13.6 gram per cc. And it's so heavy. The density of nucleus is 10 to the power of 14 gram per cc. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? It's a lot of mass inside the nucleus. Now, from this ratio, you can easily conclude that 99% of atom is empty. The nucleus contains most of the mass and but it is very small, very small. The neutrons and protons are, I mean, jam packed inside that to the extent of the density equal to 10 to the power of 14 gram per cc. Okay. Now, let's see the drawbacks of Rutherford model. Now, every model has to pass certain experiments, certain other theories which are more evident in nature. So, Rutherford model failed to explain, first of all, the stability of atom. I have just told you that according to Maxwell electromagnetic theory, an uh, electron, if it accelerates, it will fall slowly and slowly into the nucleus. So according to Rutherford, the stability of atom, he was not able to explain that completely. He was not able to explain the elect electronic structure of atom, how the electrons are distributed in different, different shells in an atom. He was not able to explain that. Last but not the least, he couldn't explain the discontinuous nature of hydrogen spectrum. It was found later that that hydrogen spectrum is discontinuous. There are certain lines in the hydrogen spectrum. But if we believe in the model of uh, atom given by Rutherford, according to Rutherford, if an uh, electron is moving continuously, it should be emitting the energy also continuously and as a result of that, the spectrum of hydrogen was supposed to be continuous. But experimentally, it was found that the spectrum was discontinuous. So here we come to end with the Rutherford's model. Rutherford was not able to give the successful model of atom. 
बट नेवर दी लेस ही वॉन द नोबल प्राइज फॉर हिज इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन टू द रेडियो एक्टिव सब्सटेंसेज His teacher Thomson who gave the previous model also won the Nobel prize for his investigations into cathode ray tube both teacher and student won the Nobel prize but none of them was able to explain the correct structure of atom from now onwards the major question in our discussion will be how to explain the stability of an atom how to keep that electron that elusive electron safe without making it fall inside the nucleus okay so let's move forward but with a different route let us discuss certain topics like isotopes isobars isosters and then we'll make our journey again into the atomic structure so student let us take a b route uh, let us study uh, about certain species of molecules and atoms or the ions which are in one way or other are related some might be having same mass number some might be having same atomic number some might be having same number of electrons so let us study that but before we move forward let me just introduce you to a small thing which you already know that is basically mass number and atomic number any element suppose say x the mass number what is mass number mass number is the total number of neutrons and protons found inside a nucleus of a atom so we write that thing over here this is mass number and atomic number is the total number of protons present in a nucleus of an atom so we write that thing over here okay now let us discuss that stuff so one species is called isotopes isotopes are the atoms of same element remember that same element which are having same atomic number that means same z value they will have the same atomic number but different mass number mass number will be different hmm? so let us see that for example i am having three isotopes of hydrogen the atomic number is same atomic number is same but mass number is different that means that means number of neutrons plus protons are different this is called deuterium this is called tritium okay so they are called isotopes the species which are having of the same element which are having same atomic number but different mass number okay now let us come to a second example of carbon carbon has got three isotopes everyone having atomic number of 6 that means number of protons present are 6 but the mass number is different 12 13 and 14 this isotope of carbon is used in carbon dating in finding out the age of earth age of rocks is that clear so let's come to the next part that is called isobar now just opposite to isobar we have atoms of different elements here we have got atoms of same element here we require different elements with different atomic number here the atomic number is same but here atomic number is different but same mass number mass number is same here here mass number was different and we need what different elements here everyone is hydrogen here it is carbon but here the element has to be different with what with same mass number mass number is same but different atomic number different number of protons are there is that clear now let's take one more example this is a isotope or it is a isotope of hydrogen and this is one of the isotope of helium they both have same number of mass number same number of neutrons plus protons but different number of protons different atomic number so they can ask you that which of the following species are isotopes which of the following species are isobars and stuff like that so let's discuss few more species like that okay so let us come to the next species called isodiaphers isodiaphers are the atoms of different elements for which number of neutrons minus number of proton is constant is same okay so see that for example we take boron now this part is called number of protons this contains neutrons plus protons so what i am saying let me do it here x a and z z represents number of protons so this will be protons so protons 
will be 5 in this case. This represents n plus p. This represents n plus p. Z represents p. So, n plus p is 11 here. So, if you subtract n plus p, I mean this first equation from n plus p, this will be n will be 11 minus 5 will be 6. So, n minus p will be 6 minus 5 that will be 1. So, let us check it out for this part. Here protons, number of protons is 6, number of neutrons plus protons is 13. So, from here, from these two equations, subtract first from the second, I will get n equal to 7. Okay, 13 minus 6 will be 7. So, n minus p will be 7 minus 6. 7 minus 6 equal to 1. So, you can see that n minus p value is same. It's same for isodiaphers. Now, let us come to isotones. Isotones are the atoms of different elements which have the same number of neutrons which have same number of neutrons now see what will be the number of neutrons that will be a minus z which we have been doing here a minus z so number of neutrons will be 3 minus 1 2 in that case 4 minus 2 again 2 so you can see that number of neutrons is 2 2 in each case these species are called isotones because they have same number of neutrons now look over here again number of neutrons will be a minus z 39 minus 19 will be 20 similarly 40 minus 20 will be again 20 so you can see that number of neutrons is same in these cases so, these potassium and calcium in this case, they are isotones. Is that clear? Now, let us look at a couple of more species. Okay. So, let us discuss two more species. Isosters. Isosters are the molecules which have same number of atoms. The number of atoms should be same and number of electrons should also be same. So, isosters are the molecules which have same number of atoms and same number of electrons. So, let us see this. So, we have got two species CO2 and N2O. You can see that in these two molecules, number of atoms are three. One carbon and two oxygen, three atoms. Number of atoms are three, two nitrogen and one oxygen atom. So, number of atoms, number of atoms is three each. Now, let us look for electrons because same number of electrons is also the compulsory condition to qualify as isoster. Now, see carbon dioxide is COO. So, carbon has got 6 number of electrons, oxygen has got 8, 8. You add them up, total will be 22 electrons. Okay, similarly for N2O you go, N2 will be N, N and O. Nitrogen has got 7 electrons, 7 electrons and 8 electrons. 7, 7, 14 and 8, they will be again 22 electrons. So, number of atom is same and number of electrons are also same. So, they qualify CO2 and N2O. This N2O is called nitrous oxide. This is laughing gas. It will give you a feeling of euphoria when you smell that. Okay isoelectronic species now these are the atoms remember that atoms molecules or ions even ions can qualify as isoelectronic which have same number of same number of electrons same number of electrons you know that in cl we have got 17 electrons one negative charge means one more electron so total number of electrons becomes 18 so here we have got 18 electrons atomic number of argon is basically 18 so in both the cases we have got 18 electrons so they cl ion chloride ion and argon they both are isoelectronic, they have got same number of electron. Similarly, H2O and ammonia, water and ammonia also qualify as isoelectronic species. How come? You know that in hydrogen, we have got one electron. So, one for hydrogen and one for one more hydrogen, two plus eight, ten, ten electrons. Similarly, nitrogen has got seven, hydrogen each one, three are there. So, seven plus three. 10. So, 10 electrons here also. So, they both are isoelectronic in nature. 
I hope that is clear. This is simple, but sometimes they may ask you a simple question in NEET also. So we should be prepared for that. Okay. Hello students and welcome back. So today we'll do some questions on the concept which we have mastered in the last class. And we'll begin by doing questions on the concepts like isotopes, isobars, isotones, finding number of electron protons. So we should begin that, okay? So this is comparatively easy. So we'll begin with easy and we'll be moving higher on the plane of the toughness level of questions. So normally need to ask you some very simple questions, good questions, but simple conceptual questions. So make sure that your concepts are very clear. So the best way to do the concepts and the clarity of that is to practice the questions. So we are doing just that now. So this question says calculate the number of protons and neutrons and electrons in bromine. So in this atom of bromine, you see that this is 80 bromine and this is 35. This is called atomic mass or you can say this is called mass number. This is actually equal to number of neutrons plus protons. While this is called Z, atomic number. This is nothing but number of protons. And if the substance given is neutral, it will be also equal to number of electrons. So let us solve now. So number of protons they are asking. So number of protons are given by this number. So number of protons will be 35. Now if I talk about number of electrons, since this is neutral, this is neutral. So number of protons will be equal to number of electrons because in to qualify something as neutral, it is very important that the amount of positive charge should be equal to amount of negative charge. So amount of positive charge is given by number of protons, amount of negative charge is given by number of electrons. So since this is neutral, number of protons should be equal to number of electrons. So number of electrons will also be 35. Now see at this mass number or atomic mass, this is 80 which is equal to n plus p while p is equal to 35. So from this equation I can say that n plus p is equal to 80 while p is equal to 35. So if p is equal to 35 put the value there this will be n plus 35 giving you 80. So from here I can find out n will be 80 minus 35. 80 minus 35 and that will be equal to 45. So number of neutrons will be 45, number of electrons will be 35 and since it is neutral, number of protons is also 35. Is that clear? This simple question. Okay, come on, let's do this question now. They say given isobar, isotone and isotope of carbon-14. So this is one of the isotope of carbon and they're asking an isobar, isotone and isotope. Now see, first of all, let us do first one that is isobar. So what is an isobar? Isobar are the atoms or molecules which belongs to different elements which are having same mass number, same mass number. So mass number we want is 14, but atomic number should be different atomic number should be different. So for carbon 14, 6, the isobar, the isobar must be something which should be having 14 as the mass number. Mass number should be same for isobar. So if you recount what you have learned in the junior classes, when it comes to you uh, regarding 14, the element which comes in your mind is nitrogen because the mass number of nitrogen is 14. So you will require a basic decent information of periodic table about the elements. So nitrogen 14 and the atomic number of nitrogen is 7. Now this is exactly what I require. I require an atom or a molecule which is having same mass number but, but different, but different atomic number. Okay. So nitrogen becomes the isotope. Okay. Now see, come to second part. Isotone. Isotone. Now, what are isotones? Isotones are the atoms which are having 
which are having same number of neutron and they should belong to the different elements. So again we are looking for isotone of carbon 14. Now see how many number of neutrons are there to find number of neutrons what I should do this is n plus p this 14 is nothing but n plus p this is equal to p. So if you if I want to find out n what I should do I should subtract n plus I should subtract p number of protons from n plus p mass number 14 minus 6 so number of neutrons I'll get will be 14 minus 6 that will be 8 so I should be looking for I should be looking for an atom or an element which is having number of neutrons as 8 so how you will do that so you want this to be 8 that actually means the difference between the mass number and the atomic number should be same that means a minus z should be 8 now to do that do one thing I'll tell you a trick for that trick for that suppose if I take an element after carbon let's suppose say nitrogen and it is having atomic number say 7 now since I want x over here and such that x minus 7 should be 8 so how will I find x over here it will be 15 because 15 minus 7 will be giving me 8 so an isotope of nitrogen which is having the mass number 15 can give me the same number of neutrons so what I'm telling you we can further make a shortcut now now go for a further element oxygen which is having atomic number 8 now if you're adding one down 6 plus 1 7 7 plus 1 8 so here what we will do we will add one again 14 plus 1 15 15 plus 1 16 so what I'm saying if you are adding 2 to the atomic number you add 2 to the mass number in that case the difference between the mass number and the atomic number will be same and what is that that is number of proton a number of neutrons so I repeat if you want same number of neutrons the difference between the mass number and the atomic number should be same so you can choose any element for which the difference between the mass number and the atomic number uh, is same so 14 minus 6 8 15 minus 7 8 16 minus 8 8 again you can choose something which is having like 6 17 and this is 9 so 17 minus 9 will be again 8 is that clear okay now let's come to the isotope So isotope, what is isotope? Isotope is the different atom of the same element which is having same atomic number but different mass number. So we are having 14 carbon 6. This is one of the isotope of carbon. We know other isotopes of carbon as well. What are those? It should be carbon 6, carbon 6 and we can have 13, we can have 12 as well. So the idea is that the atomic number should be same and mass number can be different. Remember that an element is known by its atomic number. Atomic number is the DNA profile or you can say fingerprint of a element. So if you want an isotope you should remember that the atomic number should remain same. Once the atomic number is same the element remains same. Elements signature the fingerprint is atomic number mass number can change okay I hope that is clear so let's do some more questions now okay see uh, this is the next question this question says the number of electrons protons and neutrons in an species are 18 16 and 16 respectively so number of electrons are given as 18 number of protons are given as 16 and number of neutrons are given as 16 okay now they're saying assign the proper symbol of the species now see any species i'm saying that this species suppose say x so the symbol of a species is like atomic number and the mass number that is number of neutrons plus proton this is number of protons this is the fingerprint of a element I mean that an element is known by its atomic number mass number can be different number of neutrons in an element can be different but if you want suppose say nitrogen then the number of protons in that atom should be 7 the moment you make it 8 it becomes oxygen the moment you make it 6 it becomes carbon so if you put a proton into an atom the identity of an atom will change 
but if you put a neutron into an atom its identity will not change it will still remain the same element suppose if i am putting one neutron in carbon 12 it will become carbon 13 but will remain carbon only so we can safely say that the identity of an element is known by its atomic number that is number of protons and if the element or the given atom is like neutral in that case the number of proton is also equal to number of electron because if it is neutral so positive charge should be equal to negative charge positive charge is given by z negative charge is given by electron so they should be same now see coming back to this question they want proper symbol to the species so let the species this and suppose the number of electrons and the protons are not equal in that case it might be having a negative charge if the number of electrons are more or it might be having a positive charge if the number of electrons are less as compared to that of proton so let investigate this Chal. see that first of all let me find out z z for this will be protons this is 16 z is nothing but number of proton this is 16 now let me find out a atomic number that is nothing but n plus p so n is 16 p is also 16 so 16 plus 16 will give me 32 so a is 32 z is 16 so now if you go with the periodic table z equal to 16 belongs to which element yes sulfur number of protons equal to 16 that means the element will be sulfur and the mass number will be 32 let us see that whether this species contains some charge or not to find out whether it contains charge or not for that we have to find out the number of electrons and protons which they have already given now see that now see that number of electrons number of electrons is given as 18 number of protons is given as 16 so you can see that number of electrons are more so the negative charge will be there on the species how much of negative charge for that you should go with number of electrons minus proton that is 18 minus 16 that will be two negative charge the charge on this species will be minus two because of the excess of electrons which are two in this case so now let us write down the symbol of species it will be like sulfur 16 the atomic number 32 the mass number and two negative charge so minus 2 that is the symbol of this species if the number of electrons and number of protons were same like 16 16 each in that case there would have been no charge over there it would have been simply 32 sulfur and 16 is that clear so students let's learn a very basic concept of uh, atomic structure i just want to share that piece of information with you people so here understand that weight of a neutron is almost equal to the weight of proton and the weight of neutron and weight of proton one proton we call that as one atomic mass unit it is the unit of measuring the weight of atoms and molecules in the micro world and when you convert that into grams it will be 1.66 into 10 to power of minus 24 grams so you can see that how light they are the protons and, and neutrons they are very light out there now as if we compare the weight of protons and neutrons with weight of electron you will find that electrons are very light very light see protons and neutrons are already very light the pro the weight of electron is very very less as compared to the weight of proton and neutron we saw that while we were doing the millikan's oil drop experiment millikan found out that the weight of the weight of electron is how much 9.1 10 to power of minus 28 grams or 9.1 into 10 to power of minus 31 kg very light in comparison to weight of protons and neutrons also so if we do a simple mathematics we will come to know that weight of proton and weight of neutron individually they are 1860 times approximately in comparison to the weight of electron so you can see that the weight of electron is very very less as compared to weight of proton and neutron so if we ask you a question that what is the total weight of an atom so you will say that total weight of atom whatever it is it is because of the neutrons and protons present inside the nucleus the weight of electrons is almost negligible 
it just like it just like that if i add a small stone a small piece of pebble to a truck a loaded truck then if i ask you find the net weight change the net weight change will be minuscule we can neglect that because truck is already very heavy as compared to the weight of pebble so similarly when finding out when we'll find out the atomic mass or atomic weight of an atom we'll focus only on the weight of neutrons and protons since weight of neutron and weight of proton is assumed to having one unit okay so suppose we are having five neutrons and five protons so how many units of weight they are having 5 plus 5 10 units so the atomic weight or atomic mass will be called 10 is that clear now let us understand this question how to attack this question based on this concept they say the atomic weight of zinc is 70 atomic weight what is atomic weight the weight of neutrons plus protons is called atomic weight that means the entire weight 